Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Security Conference in New York City. I'm here with Jacob and Caroline. Jacob and Caroline, how are you doing? Doing well. Very good. Thank you, Mike. And you're with Cobalt, Cobalt.io, but you're with Cobalt. And what do you guys do? So Cobalt is a crowdsourced application security platform. So we connect this crowd of freelance vetted security researchers with our clients. So a typical uh, security researcher is a freelance penetration tester, and our typical offering is what we call a crowdsourced on-demand penetration test. So typically the clients that go with this model are what we call cloud-first businesses. So they're in the cloud, agile um, environment, and so forth. And they're looking for a new way to test their applications. So they might be a little bit tired of um, you know, traditional scanners that, you know, where you have too many false positives. Or you know, on the other side, you have consultants that are you know, working with emails and PDFs. It's difficult to find uh, you know, who are the good consultants and who are the ba bad ones. So uh, what we provide on the COBOL platform is access to you know, uh, a, a global talent pool that you can schedule a, a crowdsource pen test via the, via the platform and get all the data and KPIs as well for that, uh, for that engagement. So when you say crowdsource, though, you really mean really well vetted crowdsource. That's right. So yeah. a crowdsourced pen test is a pen test that is crowdsourced. We have our global pool of researchers, but the ones that we place on projects are extremely highly vetted. So for example, a crowdsourced pen test is typically time boxed, maybe it's two weeks, and we would select three out of the top 200 security researchers whose skill sets are matched to an application's technology stack. So if it was a financial company, you might pick someone who has experience in the financial industry. That's right. So an organization that chooses to do a project, they would say, here is the type of technology that we're using with our web application, and we would choose researchers with that skill set. So an example team might include one lead who has a CISSP credential and 16 years of professional experience supported by two technical domain experts. And, and how is that better or different than regular penetration testing? Does it bring extra benefits to an organization? So the thing about regular penetration testing is that if it's manual penetration testing, it's done by consultants, then you have a limited consultant pool. And a, a consultant will be assigned based on their availability, perhaps something about their skill set. But if we're able to leverage this large global pool of experts, then you have much more in terms of availability as well as skill set. And the way that crowdsource security works, the platform actually has data about what are these person's skills, what is their experience, and what is their recent performance, which a typical consulting firm is not necessarily going to provide you when they do a pen test engagement. So going forward from, from here, so you've got a crowdsource penetration testing. What else do you guys do at Cobalt that brings extra benefits to your partners? Yes. Um, so the key offering is, is a crowdsourced uh, pen test, um, but we actually grew up in, in the space of uh, public bug bounty programs. So over the years, we've done around 200 of those. And one thing that we learned from the, from the public bug bounty programs is that you, you might have thousands of security researchers that are looking at a web app or mobile app. And there's the, the benefit from that is that you get a lot of good eyes, but there might also be some security researchers who are like new to the game. And also by the nature, once you have thousands of, of security researchers engaged, then you also uh, have a fair amount of duplicate reports being submitted. And what we learned over the years, though, is that many organizations are not looking to have you know, thousand testers on your web app, but are looking more to have a more focused test, maybe with a, with a handful of security researchers. And that is the key difference between you know, this crowdsource public bug bounty and a crowdsource pen test. So where the bug bounty, you have many researchers, the testing is a bit scattered. On the crowdsource pen test, you have fewer researchers and it's more focused testing, which also helps us, for example, to ensure that we can provide coverage of the testing. So do a lot of the bug bounties turn into penetration tests? I mean, is that, if, if we discover a lot of bugs and a lot of researchers are looking at it, do they then make that into a penetration test down the road so we don't have bugs? Yeah, but that's a, that's a very, very interesting question, I think. Um, you know, originally you had these public bug bounty programs and then you had the emergence of private bug bounty programs and then now we have what we call the crowdsource pen test. And what is really the difference between these things, right? So one key difference, for example, if you, if you look at something like uh, a private bug bounty program, 
is that um, you, you cannot ensure coverage. You don't know if someone actually looked at an API, for example, if no bugs or reports are submitted. Whereas the pen test, because the, the payment model is a little bit different, we can ensure coverage. So to answer your question in terms of the researchers, there's definitely some researchers who come in and, you know, from the bug bounty world and then, you know, they pick up skills there and then, you know, they end up also uh, being engaged in, in pen testing. And we also see, um, you know, researchers going the other way as well. So there, there's that skill sharing as well. A, a crossover. Yeah. Another sort of key element that's a little different from bug bounty versus pen test is in a crowdsourced bug bounty, you've got potentially lots and lots of researchers, and they're all working in competition against each other because the first to get to the bug is the one who gets paid. In a crowdsourced pen test scenario, you've got one lead, two domain experts working collaboratively so that they can get more coverage. Uh, typically, a crowdsourced pen test definitely includes coverage of OWASP top 10 as well as business logic. So it's a broader far more far-reaching test. That's well. right. Yeah. It's more focused and it's also more far-reaching. It's not scattered because there's no sort of guidance or procedural assurance that there's going to be coverage with a typical bug bounty program. So you guys are based in San Francisco right. and you're cobalt.io and how does someone become part of your expert network or your, your, your network of pen testing? Sure. How does someone just pop in and say, hey, Use me? Yeah, no, so luckily today we, uh, we have a good amount of security researchers already on our platform who's actually referring um, other security researchers in. And what happens then is that once uh, a researcher is being referred in is that they sign up on the COBOL platform. They'll submit an application to become part of our, you know, our COBOL core, which is our top vetted security researchers. And then we go through a manual vetting process of, of you know, that new um, person coming in. And um, if they perform well in the first couple of engagement, they're being rated on the clients, and then they'll get new engagement, and they basically build up uh, trust and credibility and reputation on our platform. Excellent. So if, if the three of us sit down next year, a year from now, here in New York for the security second year, what would you like to say has changed in the industry, and what would you like to see change for COBOL in those 12 months? Yeah, so one of the things that we see now that we're going to talk about actually tomorrow is what we call the third wave in, in application security. And we've been looking a bit at how application security has evolved over the last couple of, of centuries. And really it, it started in, in the 90s um, where you had the, fo 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 the formation and the foundation of the industry where we would call that the people wave. So you had the first consultancies, the first certifications, the first conferences and so forth. So around the turn of the century, that turned into the second wave, which we call the, the automation. So you have the scanners, the you know, automatic, automatically looking for vulnerabilities in web apps and, and, and both the application layer and network layer. And now we're entering the, the, the third kind of wave. Were those scanners mechanical or? Yes, yes, yes automatic yes. scanners. So some of the, the products would be an app scan or web inspect and yep. some of the early uh, app sec scanners. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting about the third wave is that they're kind of incepted via the, the bug bounty pr uh, programs. And what the bug bounty programs brought to application security was three elements. So a global uh, access to, to talent uh, it was uh, you know, a platform where you can work and collaborate with external security researchers. And it's like processes and data all, all built in. But it's not specific just to bug bounty program. As we've talked about, it it's also will also impact other areas of application security, like for example, a, a penetration test. So a penetration test in the future and already today is if you if you go via the COBOL platform, it's globally sourced, it's on a platform and you have easy access to data and KPIs. Excellent. And Caroline, where do you see COBOL going? Yeah, so today I really see two major challenges in the industry. One has to do with security metrics, the other has to do with diversity. Mm -hmm. On the security metrics front, I've worked with many organizations to try and put security metrics in place to demonstrate the value of their application security problem uh, programs, and they run into a consistent challenge, which is that many organizations do not have a single source of record for holding on to their pen test findings. A lot of their pen test reports are in PDF, they're floating around in email, and so it's hard for folks to get accurate and complete data to populate their metrics. But as Jacob was saying, with a crowdsourced pen test, the findings and the data are in the platform. So instead of being this heavy manual lift, it actually becomes the default setting. 
On the topic of diversity, um, certainly there's been a lot of focus on diversity both in security and in technology. All tech, yeah. We yep. know that diversity makes things better. MIT, Stanford, Princeton, Scientific American, all these organizations have published studies in the last few years saying diversity helps us to innovate, it helps us to make better decisions, it helps us to perform better. And in the crowdsource pen test model, it doesn't matter what your gender is, it doesn't matter what your race is, or where you're from, or where you live. The only things that matter are your skills, and your experience, and your performance. And these things are built into the platform so that the best and the brightest can really be acknowledged and rewarded. Excellent. Jacob and Caroline, we look forward to that conversation next year. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We do too as well. Thank you. Thank you.